couple of quick perceptions. One, um, Putin is not someone who does a lot of interviews. Well, really any interviews. He's done an interview in almost four years. Um, he's not good at explaining himself. I didn't think he's smart. There's no, I'm just, no question about that. Um, but he's clearly spending a lot of time in a world where he doesn't have to explain himself. So he, I, uh, sort of piecing to, that's one of the reasons I'm having trouble thinking about the, the interview as a whole, because he didn't sort of lay out his case very coherently, though if you listen carefully, and we were there for a long time talking to him, a couple of things rose to the surface. One, he's very wounded, and I suggest this, but of course he denied it, but it's obvious, he's very wounded by the rejection of the West. The United States doesn't like Russia, the US government doesn't like Russia. I think like a lot of Russians, he expected the end of the Cold War would be sort of Russia's invitation into Europe or sort of into Europe because it is a European country that's half in Asia. Uh, but there's a lot that's European about it. And if you come to Moscow, it's a very European city. You see it and you can feel it culturally. Um, and the West rejected Russia. And maybe, you know, I'm not even taking sides in this. Maybe there were good reasons. I don't know what they, what they would be. But um, but in case the West was determined not to be allied with Russia, that's very obvious. That's the whole point of NATO, I guess, is to contain Russia. Um, and Putin is wounded by it. He's very upset about it. His eyes flashed. Uh, when we talked about that, as we did, you know, for probably over an hour, um, he didn't have a coherent theory that he was willing to tell me anyway as to why that is. Um, Russia's not an expansionist power. Sorry. You're not supposed to say that because all the Tory and new ones and all the liars and ideologues who run the State Department, um, want to make him into this, you know, Hitler, Imperial Japan, but the truth is that that's just false. It's just stupid, actually. You have to be an idiot to think that. Russia's too big already. It's the biggest landmass in the world. They only have 150 million people. And they've got, you know, 80-some effectively provinces or semi-independent states, but different nationalities and religions and languages. And, I mean, imagine managing all that. They've got more than enough natural resources. They're, they're swimming in natural resources. They don't have enough people, in their view. So the idea that they want to take over Poland, why would you want to do that? Um, they just want secure borders. Maybe they're too paranoid about it. Totally possible. Again, not taking sides. But the idea that they're going to roll into Vienna or something, you'd have to be like an idiot to think that. It's just not true. There's no evidence of it, actually. And the professional liars in Washington really don't know anything about the area or really anything about the world beyond New York have convinced themselves or anything is trying to convince you that this guy's Hitler and he's trying to take this to Vietnam or something. It's like not analogous in any way. Whatever Putin's many faults... OK, um, it's not an expansionist power. So uh, I can't even recall my point exactly, other than he is to the extent he's angry and that it's obvious he's angry because he feels like, whoa, why? You know, I thought we were going to be friends. Um, and again, maybe that's his fault, but he's definitely mad about it. Uh, and the second thing I would say, which I thought was kind of kind of really striking is that he was willing to admit that he wants a peace deal in Ukraine um, and sort of give it away and just sort of say that out loud. He said it a couple of different times. Again, maybe he's lying in ways I didn't perceive, but he kept saying it. I, mean, I don't know why he would say it if he didn't mean it. Um, and of course, there is, as a matter of fact, uh, there is evidence overwhelming that there was a peace deal or part of a peace deal at the beginning of peace talks, a settlement of some sort on the table a year and a half ago that the former Prime Minister of Great Britain, Boris Johnson, scuttled on behalf of the Biden administration and convinced Zelensky and the Ukrainian government not to enter into these talks. I mean, that's kind of an established fact. The Israelis were there. They revealed this. And that happened. So, but Putin, for his part, again, you know, even talking about Putin, you feel like you're flacking for Putin. I'm from La Jolla, California, not flacking for Putin. I'm, you know, please. Um, I'm just trying to assess this rationally. Uh, it's interesting that He's willing to say, yeah, I want some kind of settlement. And the final thing I'll say is that if you're wondering who the lunatics are, um, U.S. officials have said on the record and have said to me um, and are telling a bunch of people that part of the terms have to be Russia giving up Crimea. And without getting into the whole history of Crimea, um, here are the facts. It's, you know, the home of Russia's warm water fleet. It's got a Russian population. They had a referendum. It chose Russia. Uh, it's part of Russia. It's where Russian wine comes from. 
Um, so you could like that or not like it, but the fact is Putin would would go to war, nuclear war, if it came down to Crimea. So if, and by the way, Crimea was in Russian hands at the beginning of this war. So it's like, if you really think that a condition of peace is that Putin's going to give up Crimea, then you're, um, you're like a lunatic. And, and they are. I mean, they want a weak leadership in Russia. And the question is, why would you want that? How is that good for the United States? I'm not defending Russia. I'm defending my own country. A weak central government in a nation with the world's largest nuclear stockpile is insane, especially a country as large and potentially fractious with this many languages, ethnicities, religions, 20% Muslim population, you're just going to sort of let the nuclear stockpile float free and hope the best thing happens. You're a freaking nutcase if you, if you desire that. And we are run by nutcases. The president and that poisonous moron, Toria Newland, oh, we're going to depose Putin. Well, then what happens? What happened in Libya when we deposed and allowed, you know, Gaddafi be murdered? What happened in Iraq when we brought Saddam to justice? Those countries fell apart and they've never been rebuilt again. In Afghanistan, we took out the central government and they came back. It's still run by the Taliban. So our track record of knocking out the leader, which is very easy to do, is uh, spotty at best. Things don't always get better. And to do that to Russia, you know, the largest landmass in the world with the largest nuclear arsenal, like, you're on drugs if you think that's a good idea.